Well, good morning from the Philippines. Uh, this is the first of uh, many live shows that I'm gonna upload so that people around the world can know what it's like to move to the Philippines. It's 8 a.m. here, and this is Angeles City, and that's Pampanga. Morning. And as you can tell, by some of these uh, empty lots here, that some of the houses were destroyed a long time ago, and they never re rebuilt them. But this is a very, very rare subdivision because it is uh, so quiet at night, you can't actually hear yourself think. You can hear a pin drop at night. So we're gonna walk around and talk. Here's another prime example. And there's uh, many, many Koreans living in this area. Angeles City now has a very, very large Korean town. Uh, many businesses, shops, restaurants. So it attracts many people. Not too many loud dogs here. And uh, the place we're at now is near the Clark International Airport. Come here, Gong. My dog's out in the road running around playing. And you'll notice uh, this big, you can see it, there's a big water tower over there. Morning. Come on, So I hope to answer any of your questions. If you could leave comments below, any, any type of questions you might have about moving to Asia. I guess we'll go down this street here. So I moved to Asia about 10 years ago. And I'm from America originally. And uh, I just uh, put away everything I wanted to keep long term in America. I bought a U Haul van. I filled it with whatever I wanted, found a safe parking spot for it. I packed two very, very large suitcases with everything I think I would need. And I came over. So, if you're gonna come to the Philippines, oh, my dog's playing here. Hey, first thing you're gonna know, dogs in cages. Hey, baby, it's okay. Maybe it's not okay. Woo. So, uh, the first thing you wanna do is read all the information you can about where you're going. Maps, pictures, history. And then the second thing is you wanna find a good price. Hotels, airlines, um, 
And the third thing you want to do is have contacts here already in place so that you have friends waiting for you. So you could be online. Morning. You could be online chatting it up. Uh, you should have, I would say, no less than 10 contacts of people who uh, you're going to call friends and they're going to call upon you and you're going to call upon them when you get here. So you will not be alone. And you'll have, uh, you know, some people at least you have talked to before for a while. Good morning, puppy. Come here, Gong. Come here, baby. Hey, 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 careful. Careful. My dog likes to run in front of cars. Okay, the next thing is, um, if you can get any vaccinations, you should. Uh, this is a wild, wild west of, uh, of things that can affect you. Uh, I would, if you are coming, activated charcoal. You can buy that at Walmart. And uh, the other is bentonite clay. You should, uh, you should have a ready supply of both of that. The food grade bentonite clay, that's what we're gonna use if you get sick. If I had known about that in the beginning, I would have had a better time. Oops, let me try to adjust my camera so it's not so bouncy. All right. I see some people exercising up there. Let's see if I can see it from here. Yeah. Oh, there are some dogs down there. Jeez Louise. Okay. So, no matter where you're at, you can always get to Manila. Uh, for me, I usually fly out of Atlanta, Houston. You can go up to Chicago. Um, if you want to go across America to hit California, once you hit California, then of course you can stop off in Japan or Korea, or you can have a direct flight like I did the first time. Uh, it was like 17 hours or something. It was an old 747 that Philippine Airlines had probably bought from Saudi or something like that because it kept telling me which way Mecca was on the airplane so obviously it had been configured by someone who really wanted to know where mecca was the airplane uh, it's been retired now they don't use 747s but you can get a triple seven a really great price one way is around 800 when you get to the manila airport if that's where you're flying to you have to show an onward ticket so the rule is you have to have a ticket it doesn't have to be a ticket back where you came from so if i were you if you plan on staying in the philippines you just buy the cheapest ticket you can which is usually to hong kong or taiwan and you book it for maybe four months in the future and uh, if you have to use it you have it but it's required to enter the philippines you have to have that uh, ticket to get out there's no more COVID restrictions here. Uh, that ended. And uh, my next uh, word of advice is when you get to Manila Airport, no matter day or night, there's going to be some good taxis, some bad taxis. Some people want to overcharge you when they see you're not Asian or Filipino. Uh, it's a lot of games they play there. So. I'll give you the best advice I can after someone who's been here so long. The first word you want to know is, is kuya. Kuya, it, it means brother. So you always talk to a guy, you say something, 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 kuya. Say, let's say when you get into a taxi, if you don't have any other choice, and you say, uh, meter na. It means, is your meter working? Meter na, kuya? And he'll either say yes or no. He'll say his meter's broken. If he says his meter's broken, you say thank you. And you catch the next taxi. You keep asking.
some people will put their hat over the meter because they're there to uh, charge more. It's a you know type of robbery. They're gonna play a game, and you say, uh, "I need to have the meter going." They might have an excuse, and you say, "Okay, please stop. Let me out. I want to catch another taxi." And if they refuse to stop, you roll down the window, and you start yelling at security guards or the police. And usually, they will turn on the meter. I've never had a, a problem past that point. Um, if you have Grab, I'm not sure if the American Grab app is the same as the Philippine one. You can download it when you get here. Uh, Grab is very safe. The rates are already uh, published when you book it. Uh, I highly recommend that one. This is the third option. Is if there's no good taxis, they're all trying to rip people off. You take a, a bus, usually they have these uh, casino buses that will take you straight to these uh, resorts. Resort World is one of them. There's one called, hmm, can't remember what the other one is. But they are, uh, they're true casinos. Dreamland, that's it. So you would ask a guard at the airport, you would say, hey, is there a shuttle bus? to one of these resorts, and usually they are, it's free. If you go to the resort, number one, you can usually find some nice dining there. You don't have to stay at a resort. The trick is not to catch an airport taxi, to go to the resort, and when you catch a taxi from there, it will be a normal taxi, not the airport rate, and the guards will write down the license tag number. They don't have any of these, uh, rogue taxis that come through there because they're highly monitored if you lost uh, your luggage something happened in that taxi there is a record of it that's why i like to go out of the resorts to catch a taxi uh, the next thing is uh, where are you going to go when you get sick i recommend everybody starts in manila and when i say manila I really mean Makati. Makati is or Bonifacio Global City, uh, BGC. Those are some of the safest areas in Manila for you to start off and get a taste of what it's like here. And what can I say? Sometimes it's like Florida. Sometimes it's like North Florida, the weather, a little cooler. But usually it's hot and tropical except for around Christmas. Uh, you'll need to drink lots and lots of water. If you sweat too much, you're gonna need to get electrolytes. So, as we're talking about hospitals, uh, most likely you will get sick. You will get some type of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say parasite so soon, but you might get a parasite, you might get an amoeba. Uh, you will get some kind of germs in you. Morning. So the truth is, you need to go find medical help. Um, if you're in the Manila area, specifically Makati, then there, you can go to Makati Med, and that's near Greenbelt. That's like a five. It's a series of five malls put together. Green belt. That's where I would recommend people start off. Uh, secondly is St. Luke's. St. Luke's is the most expensive out of all of those. Makati Med is uh, not too expensive. And if you really don't have very much money, then you go to this uh, public hospital and it you drop the H on the word hospital. So now it's hospital with an O. Hospital Makati is a public hospital. You can show up there. You might get some weird looks, but they got doctors, they got medicine, and it's cheap if you if you're really uh if you want to save money. Uh, I went there the first time 
I came, I stayed uh, near Bonifacio Global. Everything was going good. And then I ate some street food. I don't recommend street food for people. I don't re recommend any service water. That's what they call free water. If you go to a restaurant, if they put that in front of you, no, you, you shouldn't drink that because the, con the contamination factor is ice. You don't know where the ice has been. So you could say Montezuma's Revenge, but Montezuma's from Mexico. But the, the pathogen is the same. It might have an amoeba in the water. It might have an amoeba in the ice. If you catch amoeba, it's going to ruin your vacation. It's going to take about 21 days to clear. That's uh, seven times three. You'll be on medicine for seven days. You'll be on something called flagell. And it'll uh, fix your diarrhea and your... Uh, it's, it's a horrible thing to get. I got it. I don't know if it was from service water. You keep your mouth open while you're uh, taking a shower. In places like Manila, you have a good chance of, uh, of getting an amoeba. It's not a great thing. Uh, you can get rid of it. Um, so I ate some street food. They call it uh, uh, calendaria. It sounds like a calendar. It just means somebody who cooked their food. Good morning. Good morning. Someone who cooked their food like a street vendor. And they have a lot of dishes, like 10 dishes. They have candles or burners underneath. And I remember I had some kind of fish like sweet and sour fish. And after that, I went over to a, a different mall and, oh, look, it's an Italian guard dog. Hey, baby. Oh, he's big. This is the uh, King Corso. Good morning, King Corso. It has the same bite as a, uh, as a lion. That's his jaw strength. Anyway, I was sick. I went back to my uh, hotel room and I was puking and pooping nonstop. Couldn't move. Uh, luckily, I had a friend with me. They took me to the Cheapy Cheapy Hospital, public hospital, called Hospital Makati. That's with an O, not with an H. And uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. If you've ever been to a third world hospital, that's what it's like. It's very cheap. You're sitting in there with other people. I think there were a hundred people outside, uh, you know, waiting just to be seen. Luckily, you know, I was seen rather quickly. Uh, someone has to run and pay for supplies before they can start on you. So it's good to bring somebody with you. Um, needless to say, it was like seven days of antibiotics, heavy antibiotics to get me over my food poisoning, whatever it was. So, like I say, I wouldn't eat street food if I were you. But if you're daring, you have a hardened stomach, you know, cast iron stomach, then go ahead and uh, be sure and uh, do a vlog of your experiences. So after that, I guess I was paying. Come here, dog. Come here. Come here. After that, hey, I know that dog. It's a neighborhood dog. After that, I was paying about 35 or 40 a night to stay there near uh, Bonifacio. And it wasn't anything fancy. And you know, the money keeps just chipping away. You have to find a cheaper place to stay. <clears throat> so, after that, I got feeling better. And my friend said, let's go to Puerto Galara, Sabang. So, I had never been there. So, what it is, is it's a, an island. And the island is, um, I guess you'd say four hours. Of course, you can't drive over the water. It's three hours. Let's go this way. It's three hours from Manila. 
by bus, and then you get to this place called Batangas. All right, look at Land Rover. You get to Batangas, and then once you're in Batangas, you have to catch a boat. So, uh, I was well enough to do that. And <clears throat> I would recommend it. Mindoro. Now, that's different than Mindanao. Get, get the two straight because, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. When you're first starting out here, the language is a, it's a bit different. Mindoro. So, just remember Doro and put a Min on it. And the other one is Danao. Min Danao. Oh, look, another house for rent. This is a new construction. Hello, Kuya. Hi, boy. Wow, this one's for rent. Nice. You can live in the subdivision also. And this is like a class A subdivision. So, um, I'll give you two choices when you get down there. Let's say that you, you took the bus from Manila, from Makati, wherever you are in Manila, and there's like a hundred names of cities in Manila, just like Los Angeles has a hundred different names, right? Um, so, you take the bus down to Batangas, and there you're, you have two choices. You can catch a ferry. Hello, Kuya. You can catch a ferry which is a big boat that has cars or you can catch a pump boat what is a pump boat well it's called a boot there's a dog in cages it's called a bunka boat and what does bunka boat mean it means it's made out of wood and bamboo and it has some kind of loud engine on it hey Leave that cat alone. Mm. Oh, more dogs. So, anyway, the Bunka boat, they, they have some very, very... Hold on a second. Come on. They have some large Bunka boats. Maybe they can get 200 people on it. My gosh. And it is. it looks like the... Uh, Indonesian, I don't know, Thailand. It, it looks like a big handmade boat. And it usually has the outriggers, those things on the side that uh, prevent it from turning too much left or right. It usually has that on it. Uh, it's an adventure. Here's another doggy. Hey, doggy. Hey, baby. Oh, wow, he looks very upset. Be careful when you walk by cages because the dog can still bite you. So, oh, another dog. Come on. My dog has his rabies shots. I got my rabies shots too. That's another long story. Once you get, okay, so let's say the first one is you take the big fairy. They have fast cat, they have starlight. You know, it's very comfortable. You're gonna get to a city. And I think the city is Calapan. I believe that's right. Calapan is another two hours of a beautiful drive through the mountains to get to White Beach in Sabang. And that's the places that are Puerto Galera. You'll hear that before. Puerto Galera, that's that's a very beautiful spot, Puerto Galera. It has some white sandy beaches and uh, Sabang and White Beach. Come here. Oh, here's another big dog. Uh, yeah, so I would recommend that's one of the first places you go, you know, one of the first few places. Oh. Another big dog. So, like I said, you go from Manila to Batangas. You can catch a taxi to the bus terminal. And there's several different bus terminals. If you want to, you can catch a grab there. It's going to be expensive. It's better for you to get on a, get on a bus. The buses are nice here. Uh, everybody needs to watch their stuff. There are a lot of pickpockets. Sticky finger people. 
as in some places. Even Japan has pickpockets. So it doesn't matter the economy or the type of people. And uh, so I stayed in Puerto Galera, I guess a couple nights. If you don't have a hotel reservation, there's a little bit of risk, but you can just ask around. There's always somebody who knows someone who's renting out either a room or they have a lot of apartments there. So you can find something like that. Here's another house that's going by the wayside. So I stayed there a couple nights. It does have scuba diving. It has some nice, nice places. You'll, you'll be um, inundated, overrun by people trying to sell fiery coral necklaces. They won't even let you be able to talk to your girlfriend or something. They'll come up and interrupt you, but they're trying to sell stuff, trying to make some money. Uh, are there a lot of single ladies in that spot? Puerto Galera, yeah. It attracts a lot of people. So if you don't have companionship, you can do go down there and hobnob. You can find some uh, companionship down there. I, I cannot say either way. Good companionship, bad companionship, but there are a lot of uh, single women down there if that's what uh, you need. And I would recommend everybody find someone who speaks Tagalog to be with you on your journey here. Do not come to a foreign country and go it alone because the, the time you get sick in your hotel room, if there's no one to help you, if there's no one who speaks a local language, you could die. You could die of a heart attack. Many people die alone in their hotel rooms. It happens, so don't, don't be that guy. Don't have that written on your last statement that this guy went. You hear the... That's a big lizard. It says tuka, tuka, tuka. Let's see if we can get closer. Tuka, tuka. There's our other dog here. You'll see a lot of uh, a lot of dogs in the street here in Thailand. You see a lot more because the Thailand they believe they're reincarnated people. So here I don't think they believe that. They just don't believe in wasting their time with dogs <clears throat> so be careful if a dog bites you you need to go get your rabies shots and uh, there's some places that have free rabies shots and there's some places that don't have free rabies shots so the story behind this subdivision this used to be the number one subdivision for the United States Air Force back in the 70s 80s 90s and this was before uh, Mount Pinatubo because we are in Pampanga. That's a, they call it a province, I call it a county. This is Pampanga, they speak Ka Pampangan here. And uh, this is where uh, Clark, the uni largest United States Air Force, um, was, uh, you know, the Air Force built a station here with a huge uh, flight path and runway and all the other stuff. This was the largest uh, base, Air Force base, outside of America for a while. And now it's become an international airport. They just built a new terminal. They're waiting for, you know, more and more people to come here. But unfortunately, this used to be highly kept up. All the houses were rented to Americans doing barbecue and Christmas trees it's supported by their government and now some of the houses have been rebuilt really beautiful like I say there's Koreans living here because this is a much nicer place to live during winter than Korea so there's a, a lot of Koreans here not too many Chinese or Japanese uh, there's a handful of uh, white and black people. Some of those are from UK, some are from America. So it's all depending. But uh, this is one of the best neighborhoods I have lived in in all the Philippines. And like I said, I've been here in Asia for 10 plus years. And uh, we can talk about all the different places and the different advantages 
of going to Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia. You know, there's there's pros and cons of everything. So, um, back to the story, Puerto Galera. It's a nice place, so you got the two choices. You got the bunka boat, which is kind of uncomfortable. You might get wet and the people might drop your luggage when they're trying to get it off the ship. Because when you get there, it's like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. They just put out this big wood plank looking thing and people help you off of it. And they take everything off the boat, including motorcycles, over that wood plank. Uh, I didn't really uh, think it was that great. It was an adventure. If the boat motor had broke down, it would have been a worse adventure. If you go the other one, let's say you go fast cat. It's a catamaran, it has jet motors. Uh, that one there, I would really recommend. It's fun. And it's a beautiful trip, so let's go this way. Come here. Come on, Digong. Come on, baby. Once you get to Calapan, that's the city of Min. I mean, that's the capital. Okay, Mindoro is split. So there's Mindoro Oriental and Mindoro Occidental. And what is that like? Well, it's like Virginia and West Virginia. It has uh, two different names. They have two different governors. It's two different provinces, states, whatever you want to call it. I forgot which is which because I, you know. Uh, there's other places that have the same name. Occidental, Oriental. It's all Orient to me. Or accidental, I'm joking. It's not accidental. So when you get there, you're on the top of this uh, big island. And the island is like maybe seven hours to drive from top to bottom. And it doesn't make a complete circle. If you start in one area and you wanted to go all the way on the island, if you had a car, you can't because they never finish the roads. So it'll take you about two hours going through these beautiful mountains. I don't know, I guess there's, a, there's different ways to get there. Maybe there's a small bus or you have to hire someone but it's a beautiful, beautiful journey to go from Calapan to Puerto Galera. I would highly recommend it. Stock up on everything you need. If you need some medicine, get it in Calapan because that is the largest city there. Uh, you don't know if you get out. You don't know if you get out to the other place, Puerto Galera, if they're going to have the medicine you need. Oh my gosh. It looks like another. Oh, of course it doesn't it? Hey baby. Hey baby. Keep going, let's go here. Hey, come here. <clears throat> another thing about living in the uh, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, is poisonous snakes. And we're not talking about rattlesnakes or copperheads. We're talking about cobras different types of cobras <clears throat> and the availability of anti-venom so let's say you're in Thailand and you get bit by one of those types of snakes Thailand has a pretty good distribution of anti-venom Malaysia also has a good some doggies, corgis. Malaysia has a good supply of anti-venom too. Here, uh, it's called SOL. If you get bit by one of these uh, cobras, a spitting cobra, in case it bites you and spit on you, the brown cobra, and there are king cobras here in the Philippines, uh, you have a problem because there's something called the Regional Institute of Tropical Medicine. It's a place deep in Manila that was built by the Japanese to do experiments for the advancement of uh, tropical medicine. Well, the Japanese pulled out the funding a long time ago. It's still there. Most people know it as the rabies 
rabies clinic, rabies hospital. And many people die from rabies in that clinic suffering. They have to tie them to the bed and listen to them uh, cry for days and days and say all kinds of crazy stuff. All you got to do is Google some documentaries about people dying from rabies in the Philippines and you'll see these crazy videos because rabies affects your brain. So the people, it, it's, it's just amazing. Anyway, let's go back to if you're bitten by a cobra or any kind of snake. You can try your local hospital. If they don't have anything, the chances of you getting to the Regional Institute of Tropical Medicine in the time you're needed to is uh, probably not even zero. It's probably negative. And that's because if it was just a straight drive of three hours, you could go fast. You could probably get there in two point two and a half hours. The problem is the traffic, the traffic in Manila is usually ground to a stop. So you'd be sitting in traffic, probably add another five hours. So by the time, by the time you got there, you would already be probably uh, in rigor mortis stage. So if you see some snakes here, and that means all of Asia, just stay away from snake as best you can. Uh, local people, if you got bit, I don't know if they could help you or not. Uh, it's, it's a very dangerous thing. And like I say, if you got bit in Thailand or Malaysia, I think you'd have a better chance. The reason why is because vaccine production here is not really, uh, is not really that big. Oh, here's another big house. Vaccine production requires horses. They have it on a limited scale. I guess it needs some work to it, huh? It has some limited scale and then limited distribution. So other places like Thailand and Malaysia, their snake venom is not the same as the snake venom here. It will not work 100% on these bites uh, because the snakes are a little bit different here. And you can also Google Bohol, B-O-H-O-L, yellow cobra. There's a lot of yellow cobras in Bohol. Eek. Yeah, that one looks abandoned. Empty, empty, lots of empty houses here. Waiting for people to rent. That's nice. So, onward with the story. Uh, I've been many, many places here. That was my first. If you're first coming, if, if it's your first time to Manila, the places I'm gonna recommend, the aquarium. And I've been to the aquarium many times. You say, why? Why would you go back to the aquarium? Well, every time you start dating a new person, you need somewhere to take them. So it's like the, uh, you know, the first steps of any relationship. It's to take them to this amusement park called Star City, and then you gotta go on another date to the aquarium. If they have kids and you're trying to impress them, you're trying to be nice to them, I would take them to the aquarium. And I forgot the name of the aquarium. You have to forgive me there, but there's only one aquarium in Manila, and that's the one you wanna to go to. Uh, the other places, in Manila, you can go on some dates. Ah, you know, for live music, you can go to uh, Cowboy Grill. And there's two Cowboy Grills. There's one in uh, Ermita. And I'm trying to think of the other one. Hmm. I can't remember the other one real quick. But anyway, there's a really big one in Ermita. Ermita also has uh, many casinos. Oh, good morning. Some construction. Construction going on. Got some doggies here. Uh, the reason why people have so many guard dogs here is for protection. 
And they do have some problems with uh, maybe some of the Koreans taking out loans from, uh, I don't know, people who make loans and not paying them back. And so then uh, they come visit them. So they have dogs to protect them. Hello, puppies. Hello, Kuya. Lots of little doggies. Come here, Digong. Come here, baby. Danger, come here. Digong, come here. My dog has a mind of his own. Um, so we went through first travels, recommended places when you get to Manila, uh, which airlines fly. Like I said, Japan Airlines, United, Philippine Airlines, Air Asia. Um, and if you wanted to go the other direction, there's a metal, they're building a houses here. All the houses have reinforcement with uh, metal. They're concrete block with uh, metal reinforcement so they don't fall down on you in the earthquake like some other places. Um, any other, you can fly to Cebu. Cebu is like a whole nother uh, video on what it's like down there. It's nice. It's not as crowded as Manila. It's the second big place. They have a lot of beautiful beaches down in Cebu, but it's not Manila. Manila has a lot more things to do. Um, hmm. Uh, what would I say? Don't go down dark streets at night. In closing this video, be careful of everything you do. Have I gotten pickpocketed on a jeepney? Yes. That brings me to a point. If you don't have to drive jeep, you know, ride in these jeepneys. And what is a jeepney? Well, in the war times, in the 50s and 60s, when the Americans left, they left all these jeeps. And they were these small military jeeps that, you know, they were for war purposes. So what did the locals do? They chopped the front of them. In the beginning, they didn't chop them up. They just had only like four passengers. Maybe they made it a little bit long like a scrambler. It looked like a Jeep scrambler. Well, then as time progressed, they said, hey, let's just keep making it longer. Until today, they have some jeepneys that look like school buses. So it has the front end of a jeepney and then they extended it like 24 passengers. And the passengers sit opposite each other. So it's not comfortable, it's not safe. There's no way somebody with a disability can can get on or off very easily. Well, the problem is pickpockets. And I'll tell you how it works. So before, when I was staying in Makati, I would walk around everywhere. Even sometimes at night, you know, I, I didn't know how dangerous it was. So it didn't happen at night. It happened during the, during the day. So I get on a jeepney, I have a girlfriend with me. And usually they sit next to me. Well, this girl at the time had an attitude. We, we had some kind of, uh, who knows, maybe she was upset. She did not sit next to me. So if your girlfriend sits on one side of you and you have your hand on your pocket on the other side, you're pretty much covered. People can't get up and steal stuff out of you. Well, uh, she had an attitude. She sat uh, way in the front somewhere. And I sat, uh, you know, further back. Well, about four people sat next to me and I didn't know they're working together. And this is the game. So the people will surround you, you don't, you don't know they're, they're together. Let's say four guys. Two will be across from you and then two will be sitting on the sides of you. And what happens is, sorry, what happens is the people will drop something. Come here dog, get out of the road. They will drop something on the floor and they will say, can you pick up uh, this, this uh, you know, five cents or quarter? Can you pick up that quarter? And you, you know, you won't be any of the wiser. You'll be like, sure. And you'll bend over and pick up the quarter and give it to them. And then the second time they drop it again, you know, you're thinking this person's stupid. You'll pick up the quarter and drop it. And uh, as you're picking that up, being nice, 
But people next to you are trying to get your phone out of your pocket. I didn't know. And as soon as they steal your phone, they will tell you, hey, Kuya. That means brother. Hey, brother. Somebody just grabbed your phone and he just got off. And, you know, of course, you'll believe them. And you'll get off the, the jeepney and try to go find that guy. Well, you know, your stuff has been stolen. They're still on there. So it's not a good situation to be in. If you have to ride a jeepney, you need to have some really long gang looking shirts. And what do I mean? Gang members have these extra, extra long shirts to conceal firearms and whatever else they're carrying. Well, it works two ways. When you have a really long shirt like that, you can pull it over your pockets and when you sit down, there's no, no way somebody can put their hand up their pocket to get your stuff. That's the, the beauty of that. The other thing is, like I told you before, always have a partner sit on both sides of you or uh, usually on the left is where I keep my phones. My wallet's on my right. And when I'm in a jeepney or some place like that, even in public, my right hand is always on my wallet in my right front pocket. I never put anything in the back pockets. Always right hand pocket, always hand on the wallet because you'll come into a crowd and there's a lot of people. Well, my left arm is for pushing people out of the way if somebody tries to attack me or steal my stuff. And the right hand is for like an emergency. If I need to pull it out, you know, we're gonna run. We're gonna get away from problems. And so uh, that's it. Uh, many people have their wallet stolen. So how do they do that? They don't have their hand on their wallet, number one, or they pull their wallet out. Come here, doggy. They pull their wallet out for some uh, business and somebody's near them and snatches it all at once. Okay, you will be surrounded by people. Sometimes kids, 10 or 20 kids will come up begging here, uh, unlike other countries. Uh, you know, it only takes one of them to grab your wallet and run, and you have a big problem, especially kids in a squatter area. You're not gonna find them. Even the police find them, your wallet's probably gone. So, like I said, Anytime you're in public here, your right hand is on your wallet in your pocket. Keep that hand in your pocket. Uh, protect your wallet because that's one of the most important things. Uh, make copies of all your credit cards front and back. Uh, keep as little cash as you can. The police will tell you when you're in the Philippines, don't bring in electronic gadgets out, especially if you don't know where you're going. If you have an older phone, that's okay for some adventures, you know, unless you're doing something really important. Phones are the number one things to get stolen here. So just remember that. Uh, if you have the new fancy iPhone, you better get a lanyard, you better get a case, and you better wear it around your neck. And will people try to grab it around your neck? Of course they will. So just be careful. It means a lot to them. If they steal your phone, <clears throat> maybe they can feed their family for, uh, you know a month or two so it's worth it for them a lot of people here a lot of drug users and drug addicts there are some in the big city of course they steal for uh because they need more drugs they don't steal because they're bored uh i don't think they're professional criminals they're just addicts so they're going to do what they can to support their addiction which means stealing luggage stealing anything from you because you're an easy target you're not even you don't even look like them so they can really spot you so everybody be safe if you come to the philippines and when i came i had the intention of staying so i brought you know whatever i needed from america uh, and you sh if you plan on staying here follow my advice get your vaccinations whatever you can in your country uh, that you might need for tropical places um, number two, bring what you think, even some medicines, whatever from your country. Number three, make a long list of friends here. You know, if you're on the dating apps, you know, chat with a lot of people, you'll find out which ones are real, real prospects and which ones are uh, really bad, which people you probably don't want to associate with. Some of them are just uh, gold diggers. 
you got to be really careful and remember take this last words of advice to your heart if you get involved with somebody here and you find out something's wrong they're chatting with other people maybe some of your money has been misappropriated stolen you know what keep a bag packed get your bag and walk away don't be the guy that I hear about that you know he got in a fight with his girlfriend he murdered he did something bad don't break any laws if you come to this country it's it's not worth it uh, you know stay stay where you're at uh, this is not a place to do illegal stuff don't come here and sell drugs or pimp girls or anything like that a lot of people do they think this is a great place to come open a bar and get some local girls to work for me and they can be working and I'll make profit out of them well this is not that place this is not your country this is not my country so maybe the local people can do it and maybe they know who to talk to if they get in trouble but uh, that's not us us will get thrown in jail we'll get deported I've known people that have that happen to it they get caught up in it so uh, you know don't bring your pride over here be a proud person but pride and arrogance go before the fall you'll find a lot of people who are arrogant in every country just uh, you know just uh, dismiss it just walk away and uh, don't have a fight over anything it's not worth it. it life should be peaceful you should be happy no matter where you're at if you're unhappy come to somewhere else because life is not that long what average of 80 years so uh, as much happiness as you can get out you should all right thanks for watching please subscribe and i hope to show you more videos in the future thanks